This is an introduction to use in the manufacturing workspace within Fusion. So if you're a teacher looking for a project for your class, or if you're a student learning manufacturing for the first time, or maybe you're just migrating CAM softwares over to Fusion, well, you're definitely in the right place. To get the most out of this video, you definitely want to download the 3D model associated with the project we're doing, and it comes with a blueprint that we'll be referring to. That'll allow you to keep up with this project and follow right along as we go through it. But before we get into the project, let's take an overview of what we're looking to accomplish. The first thing we're going to do is make sure we move the 3D model into the proper workspace so that we can manufacture it as well as design jigs and fixtures without disrupting its association with blueprints and assemblies. And then we're going to assign tools and operations to remove material on the part. We'll post-process out that code for a specific machine. After that, we'll plug it in and run the part. Okay, so what's the proper way to move from a design environment to a manufacturing environment? Well, that can vary. For instance, here is a, a big assembly with a team of engineers maybe uh, designed each of these components. They mated them together or joined them together inside a fusion. So there's a lot of relationships here. And then there's going to be blueprints for every one of these components. So any change that we do to this model is going to break their relationship or mess up the prints, they're going to mess up the joints, and they're going to mess up other people that are working on this project. And look, there's quite a bit of components in here. Well, while we could copy and paste or export out one of these components like we would to send it to another CAM software, because we got a CAD a full CAD design package and a full CAM software, we can really benefit by never breaking the link between the design intent and the manufacturing process. Here's a model that we're going to be using in our project. What we can do is say we want to derive out this body and say, okay, this is going to put us into that new work environment. Notice in the original part, here is our history line and it ends here. Well, where it ends there, it begins here. So any changes that we make in this history line, maybe we add an offset and say, I want to change this diameter. And it adds that in our tree. So as soon as you save it, well, not only is that going to mess up your drawing, but now your CAM document is going to be affected. It's going to say, hey, one reference is out of date. When you bring it back in the date, notice our diameter changes. This works this way in our history, but anything that we change here, uh, for instance, we add a radius to this surface here, uh, that's going to be after that, uh, after that initial derived part, so it's not going to mess up this part. What does this allow us to do? Well, it allows us to prepare this model for manufacturing. One thing that I always look for when I'm preparing a model for manufacturing is I look for sharp edges. And I just throw a radius on those sharp edges. That way, whenever I pick it up out of the machine, I'm not sitting there grabbing my deburring knife and then trying to deburr all of those stupid edges or finding myself letting it slide in my hands and getting cut. So that's one way that I prepare this 3D model. Now after this, we're going to start designing the jaws and fixtures and everything it takes to manufacture this. So now our part is ready for us to start setting up how we're going to manufacture it. That means what is the stock dimensions making our stock and also what orientation are we going to machine it from so that we can model the jaws correctly. Uh, for instance, uh, we could machine it from this perspective or we could machine it from this perspective in our three axis mill. And then we would need to make the jaws accordingly to hold it for the second operation. We can't make that decision until we look at the blueprint. Basically what we're looking for is anything that would be critical for us to manufacture it in one particular setup or could save us a lot of time. 
Now you look through some of the tolerances, plus or minus five or 10, uh, 2000s, we might wanna give that some consideration. But right here, this is a positional accuracy between the top bore and then another bore that's in line with it positionally. Uh, so because that positional accuracy is within 2000s, we could probably get that regardless of how we set this part up, but we would have to give it a lot of attention on that second operation to make sure we got that in line. So it might be better to just not worry about that uh, dimensional accuracy, uh, positional accuracy, and go ahead and machine it from that perspective. And honestly, that kind of helps us. Because this material, if we were to machine it from this perspective here, and machine all this material away from the top to the bottom here, he could get a little, you know, we would have to sink him down in the jaws. Those jaws would have to accommodate for these bosses too. So it could simplify it a little bit if we just uh, uh, machined it from the top and then flipped him and then machined everything out of the bottom. Uh, and if we got any chatter because the material was thin, that chatter would be on the inside and not on our nice finish side, right? That would be cut very while well, it's very rigid so and there's always a couple there's three things that I always think about before I do this the first is uh, what's going to give me my bang for my buck because when you pick up the part out of the machine you've messed it up because it's lost its relationship uh, with the work coordinate offset uh, so if I can machine the most features together simultaneously that's the best N not in this case this would be the second rule where is there a critical dimension that simplifies this manufacturing process? Well, yes, yes, in this instance, yes. Uh, the third one, would the part really be strong enough by the time I got to that third or fourth operation? Uh, or, do, or should I leave material, uh, you know, to keep it uh, sound during the machining process? Those are three things that I think about. Now we're ready. Uh, we know exactly how we're going to manufacture this. Uh, we're going to start from the top. We're going we're to face mill him. We're going to machine all these features, including that. And then we're going to flip him over and then drop him into a pair of soft jaws, clamp him up, and then run the, the remaining operations to finish up this part. All right. So that's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Make sure you subscribe and like, don't forget about that. And then check out our next videos where we're gonna talk about modeling the stock and the soft jaws for our setup. You'll enjoy that one.